Chances are, if you are approximately 18 to 22 years old and have had your heart broken, you have probably cried to Taylor Swift. More specifically, you have probably cried while speeding down the highway in your car, screaming the lyrics to one of her best songs, All Too Well. This song, one of many of Swift's breakup anthems, is off of her fourth studio album, Red, and this album helped put Taylor on the pop music map. It never would have been possible if Jake Gyllenhaal hadn't broken her heart. All Too Well is a fan favorite, and is considered to be one of Swift's best songs amongst critics and music junkies. Many fans and theorists have tried to figure out who the song is about, and like many songs on her fourth studio album, Red, many have come to the conclusion that Jake Gyllenhaal has inspired the well-loved number. Jake Gyllenhaal is a well-known and established actor, known for roles in films such as Donnie Darko and Brokeback Mountain. He was born into a Hollywood family with his father a director, his mother a screenwriter, and his sister Maggie an actress as well. Dylan Hall has also tried his hand in producing films in recent years. Without meaning to, Jake Dylan Hall inspired the majority of what is considered Taylor Swift's turning point in music, and to some, the best album in her eight-disc catalog. Prior to Red, Taylor's first three albums mastered the innocent country-style twang that made her name known in Nashville, Tennessee. Red was Swift's first pop album, and it put her in the place to change pop music forever, which she did. The album won seven awards and was nominated for countless others, including Album of the Year and her lead single, We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together, was nominated for Record of the Year at the 2012 Grammy Awards. In order to understand Hall's influence on the album as a whole, you have to dive into the timeline of his and Swift's relationship. The pair only dated in the public eye for three months in the fall of 2010. It is unclear if they dated in private prior to going public. They were often seen cuddling to warm up against the autumn chill and enjoying maple lattes as they strolled through the streets of NYC, where they were caught by paparazzi and these pictures were made famous. While it is unclear exactly how the relationship ended, Taylor has noted during the Rolling Stone and Amazon Music's 500 Greatest Albums podcast that the album was inspired by a breakup that was, quote, pure, absolute, to the core, heartbreak. Other than her summer relationship with Connor Kennedy, Gyllenhaal was the only other person she is believed to have dated before the release of the album. The handful of songs many believe to be about Gyllenhaal include the title track, Red, the lead single, We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together, State of Grace, and the bonus tracks, The Moment I Knew, and Come Back, Be Here. All of the songs have indicators that the relationship in question took place during the fall and that the ex-boyfriend broke Swift's heart pretty badly. Common themes in the songs include the autumn season, loss of innocence, and experiencing first real heartbreak, as well as healing from said heartbreak. All Too Well, however, is by far the most talked about track when it comes to Gyllenhaal. Swift has said that when she wrote the song, quote, it was a day when I was just like a broken human walking into rehearsal and just feeling terrible about what was going on in my personal life. Many believe there is no one else the song could be about. Many critics, including those at the well-established Rolling Stone magazine, have labeled this to be Swift's best song ever. For reference, Taylor Swift has over 175 songs, including covers and live performances. So listed as country pop on Apple Music and in many magazines, Red was a very different sound for Swift compared to her previous work. It was the first album where she steered her songwriting and production away from the banjos and heavy drums of country music and more towards the electric guitars and synthesized pop sounds heard on the radio today. Nearly half of the album ended up on pop radio, and it was the first time Swift really embraced the mainstream music path. Red was the first album where Swift consistently reached number one on the Billboard Hot 200 list, which ranks the pop songs based on sales, streams, and radio plays. She also topped many other lists of number one pop songs in the country of the United States as well as the world. The ones that got up high on the Billboard list included the title track, Begin Again, and the lead single. I don't know about anybody else, but songs like 22 and I Knew You Were Trouble became dance numbers for many slumber parties and social dances back in middle school. Since the release of Red, Swift has put out four other albums, and she has won many a many awards. Three of the four most recent albums in her discography are considered to be pop-based, and her most recent toes the line between indie alternative and pop. 1989 was the album released just after Red, and I'm sure even if you're not a Taylor Swift fan, you've heard the chart toppers like Bad Blood, Blank Space, and Wildest Dreams from her first extensive pop album. 
Reputation was a cultural reset, in my opinion, and brought in heavy rock and roll vibes, which amplified Swift's rebellion against Kanye West's tyranny against her. I could do a whole other informative presentation about that. But Lover and Folklore, her two most recent albums, were a soft pop vibe, focusing on Taylor Swift's current relationship with actor Joe Alwyn, who she's been with for over three years. Since the release of Red, Taylor Swift has been considered to be the queen of pop music, and without Jake Gyllenhaal breaking Swift's heart, who is to know if she ever would have left country music behind to become the pop music trailblazer we all know today?